How's it going? It's Luca from EDM Prod, and today we're going to be talking about a device that I've been using more and more and more recently. It's kind of just found its own way into my workflow, and it's Ableton's Shaper device. To be honest, I don't know why I haven't used it more so in the past because it has so much creative potential. So we're going to be diving into the world of creative possibilities that come with Shaper. And of course, if you want some free stuff, you know what to do. Go check out that free downloads link in the description. All right, well, first things first, what is Shaper and how do we use it? Well, it's an audio effect that comes with Ableton Suite. If you are in Ableton 11, it'll just be in the audio effects modulators section. So these are just a few Max for Live devices that have now been incorporated in Ableton. You may be familiar with the LFO Max for Live devices. This is probably the most common one. Shaper is just the one above it. It looks like this. So what's the difference between LFO and Shaper? They are both LFOs. As you can see, they both repeat and they both repeat on a particular wave cycle. I could do the exact same things with both of them if I wanted. So now they're doing the exact same thing. They're both doing sine waves. There's no difference between them. But the, the major difference is that here in Shaper, we actually get to design our own shapes. So it doesn't have to be just a few waveforms that are predetermined here, but we can design our own shapes. Everything else is pretty much the exact same. All of these functions are all of the same. And we use these devices to modulate other things. So if I go over and click map and click on any parameter, let's say the panning over here, you can see that the panning is now being modulated. So you may already kind of be familiar with how this works, but I'm just gonna quickly outline a few things that we need to know for the context of this video. If you wanna add points on the graph, then you just click and a node is appeared and you can drag it around and it snaps to this grid here. If you wanna delete points, then all you need to do is hold shift and then click on the node and it's going to delete it. So shift, click, and that deletes. And then if you just click and drag, that'll make one. If you hit this little snap button, it'll turn off snap and you can sort of just move it around freely so it's not snapping to the grid markers. And there's a little grid slider here as well so I can drag that up and make it finer resolution depending on what rate I'm using. So if I'm on, let's say like one bar, then four grid markers for one bar is gonna be a quarter of a bar, right? So it depends on the rate that we're using here. So let's say I'm done with this shape, I want a new one. I can just click this little X here and then I can use these shapes to get a starting point or I can just start drawing in lines like this, right? If you want to curve a line, all you need to do is hold Alt on Mac. It's the same as an automation. So you can see I'm holding Alt and dragging up and down. You can see this line is curving nicely. So when would you use Shaper? Well, if you want to control any parameter in a more visual way, like using this graph here, then using Shaper is a great way to do that. Another reason for using Shaper would be if you want to map multiple parameters to the same LFO. So you can see that this thing is cycling and I can hit map and you, we know that I can assign parameters to it. You can also click this button and we can map up to eight parameters. So if you want to, if you want to control multiple different things at once, then that is also a great use for Shaper. So our first example is simple. I'm just gonna make a basic sidechain effect with this Shaper device. So if I go over here, I've got this pad sound. It sounds like this. I've also got a kick here as well. So how do we use Shaper to duck this pad when the kick hits? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna go grab my Shaper device drag it onto the track and then go to my utilities folder in the browser and just grab a utility device. So Shaper is very similar to LFO tool in the way that we can design the LFO as we like it. But Shaper itself doesn't have any functions, any way of manipulating the audio. You need to pair it with other devices. So I've grabbed a utility device. Utility and Shaper go hand in hand. They're really good to use together because a lot of the time this volume shaping, this volume LFOing is kind of what you wanna be doing. So it's pretty simple to use. There is a bit of a method to it though. Before you map any parameter, make sure you set the maximum and minimum values first. It's really good habit to get into setting them first because in the example of this, if I was just to map it like this, you can see the gain goes all the way up 
to 100%. And to protect my ears, I don't necessarily want to be listening to that when it's at 100%. Also, once you map them, you can't you can't move the knob. The parameter is actually taken away from you. So actually having a look at the parameter that you're going to map before you map it and just sort of figuring out where you want to have the maximum and minimum values beforehand is a really efficient way of doing it. In this case, I know I want it to go down to zero, which is negative infinity, and I want it to go up to 50%, which is zero decibels. So I'm just going to go zero and the maximum being 50 and then map this here. And now we just need to get it in time. So I'm going to change the rate to one quarter and make a side chain sort of shape. Just going to make one more node and holding Alt, going to make it a bit like this. I'm going to turn off snap and then we can sort of just maneuver this around to see what sounds good. And so this shape here is affecting this parameter, which is the gain on this utility. So let's say I want a pretty big side chain effect. I'd have to probably have it here or a really drawn out one or just like a regular one. It's really nice, all of the control that we have here. I just have a bass patch here loaded up and I'm just gonna make a MIDI clip and put a bass note in there. Maybe C1. Just so I can get some bass sidechain happening. And the great thing about Shaper that makes it really, really unique is that I can map multiple parameters, not only in the same track, but across different tracks as well. So this Shaper device is on this track. And if I want this track to be sidechaining along with it, then all I need to do is just grab this utility device. I'm just gonna copy and paste it here and then go over here, make this 50% again, because I know it's just gonna go back up to zero and map this one here. And you can see that this Shaper device is not on the track, it's on this one, but it's still controlling this one as well. So now these two tracks are behaving together, they're behaving the same, they're pumping together. And if that's the effect that I want, then this is a great way and really efficient way of doing this. So let's say I want the bass to be completely cutting out when the kick drum hits, but I don't want the pad to be completely cutting out. I can just go in here and make the minimum value something like 20% instead of zero, and that will achieve that effect for me. Let, let have a listen. Okay, so now I'm going to be going into some more creative style techniques and how I can use Shaper. So we've established that this Shaper device can control parameters anywhere in your project. It actually doesn't matter which track it sits on, it can still control any parameter. So why don't we use one track here that has all of the Shaper devices on there and then we can just start modulating and picking destinations that we want to modulate with those Shaper devices. For example, I could call this one Sidechain and just drag it over into here and I'm gonna label this track Shaper so now whenever I want to sidechain, all I need to do is go over to the track I want to sidechain, put a utility device on there, come over to this track, click map, go map that utility device, and voila. So without further ado, I'm going to go grab another Shaper device and drag it onto my Shaper track here. It's also worth mentioning if you hit the little drop down arrow, there is a whole bunch of presets that you can check out with the Shaper device. So there's a whole bunch of different shapes that are already made for you. They have a whole bunch of like smoothing and jittering times and phase and offset. And these guys have delved into a few different presets here. So you can go check those ones out as well. All right, so I have this track here and it's got this sound loaded up on it. It sounds like this. And let's just use the Shaper device to make some sort of interesting rhythm out of this. So I'm gonna go and make, uh, I think I'm gonna make it like a bar long, maybe half a bar. And just do a few different things. I'm gonna turn the snap off and then bring this down, maybe curve some lines here and do one more. 
I've been playing with Shaper a bit, so I kind of have an idea of what I want to achieve here, but let's map it and see how it sounds. Let's map it to this one. Let's put on the metronome. Okay, so it's sounding good. Let's just rename this shaper to stay organized. I'm going to call it uh, main groove. And let's just keep going, complexify this a little bit more. All right, so now I've got this atmospheric kind of sound here. And I'm going to use the same shaper device to modulate it. What I'm going to do in this case is just add a utility device instead of modulating a filter. And maybe we can bring this before these reverb effects here. And I'm going to rename this main groove just so I know what is going on and I don't get lost. And then go in here. I know that I'm modulating a utility device in this case, so I'm going to put it on to 50% and map that here. And let's just have a listen to how that sounds. So it's following the same rhythm as the other one, which is what we want. And this will stack up nicely and layer on top of the other one. So let's have a listen to them together. You can hear in this track, the shape kind of dissipates and it starts to become just like an elongated note as the filter opens up. in the second half of the bar here. So I'm gonna do a similar thing and just kind of cut off this sound in the second half of the bar using a shaper as well. So I'm gonna grab another utility device and put it here and I'm gonna label it something like cut off notes and go grab another shaper. Where is it in my modulators? I'm gonna put it onto something like, I think two bars, right? That's what I said and then make another node, something like here. I'll show you what I mean, um, but 50, map it here. And what that'll do is it'll just fade out that second bar. So have a listen. That's all. I could maybe bring the reverb up a bit. So this is just a nice atmospheric layer on top of what we already have. Great, so I've got another few tracks here. I've got this ARP, it sounds like this. I think I've got this filter here that I want to be modulating. And just to explain the, the processing and the sound design behind this patch a little bit, I've got this audio effect rack and I've made a chain with an echo. I've also put an EQ and a reverb after it, and this is gonna make it so the echo device is getting filtered just to this section. So it's not gonna be echoing anything except the frequencies that are allowed to be echoed by this EQ. So you can hear that when I am playing this and I bring up the filter, it'll only start echoing the frequencies in this range. Have a look. And so I wanna be modulating this filter frequency to be moving around. Let's do that with a shaper device. I'm gonna add another shaper device. I think I wanna be calling this uh, slow modulation. And let's just design some sort of shape that I want to be using. I'm gonna unsync the rate this time and make it quite slow. And then sort of just make some sort of shape that is moving up and then going back down pretty quickly. 
I've been using these kind of shapes a lot. It's different to a triangle because it's spending less time above this line as it is below. It's spending most of the time down the bottom and then it's just going up for a brief moment and coming back down. I think it's a really nice sort of wandering shape that is a little bit more interesting than just a straight triangle in my opinion. So let's have a look at the knob that we want to be modulating here. It's this filter frequency and uh, let's try and find out where the maximum minimum values are and then we can map it. So I wouldn't want to go any lower than here, which is about 25% of the knob, right? If we go up to about 50%. Let's have a look at where the frequencies start to get echoed. Here is where it's really starting to get echoed. So I think that I'm just going to do it around about 55%. See how that goes. Minimum 25 and a maximum of 55. And then map this over here. It didn't go quite high enough, so let's keep going. Great, that's sounding good. I've also got this lead here, it sounds like this. And I'm going to do a similar thing that I did last time. I'm going to map the lead filter cutoff to the same shaper as that I've used in here, this slow modulation one. This will give these elements a really nice cohesive sort of layered feel like they're working together rather than doing different things. Again, trying to define my minimum maximum. That's probably my minimum, which is around about 35%, I'd say and maximum would probably be around about 70. So let's have a look. 35, maximum 70. And map this filter frequency. I think I want it to go a bit higher. And let's have a listen to these two elements together. Maybe I can get this lead to go a bit lower as well. So I really like how when the filter opens up on the lead, the filter also opens up on the ARP, which means you also get more echoes because of how I've set up this chain. It's a really nice sort of ambient textural effect that I really like. So using these shaper devices for modulating tracks together gives it a really nice cohesive feel. I've also been experimenting a lot with using multiple slowly modulating shapers and this one, you see this line here, I, I've designed this one, it's a little bit slower but it stays above the line more often than this one. So this one only just briefly comes above and stays mainly below the line and this one stays mainly above and goes down. So they're sort of doing flipped rolls and it's nice to modulate some things the opposite direction so having two that are sort of playing off each other and doing slightly different things is a great way of modulating stuff together and making it feel really cohesive as well. Finally I'm also going to show you how you can use shaper on the drums to make some cool drum fills. All right so I've got this hat loop here again there's a bit of a theme here I've used another audio effect rack and made a dry chain here. And then in this chain, I've just put some reverb on there, a bit of redux and a utility. And my utility is the thing that I'm going to modulate here. So if I go into my shaper, I actually want a drum fill to be kind of like at the end of every four bars. So it's happening much less often now. Uh, so let's change the rate over on this shaper device to four bars. And I'm also going to change the grid to maybe, let's have a look, 16, because 16 divided by 4 is 4. So there's going to be one grid line for every quarter of a bar. 
and I'm going to drag this node all the way to the other side and maybe let's go like this, make this sort of ramp up shape. And I'm going to map to this utility device here so that this chain is essentially off the whole time, but then it comes up at the end of every four bars and then comes goes back down. Let's map it over here. And I need to change this to 50%, remember? Let's have a listen to how that sounds. So you can hear that reverb comes in and a little bit more of the grit from the distortion comes in as well. Uh, I'm, I've actually got a delay device here and I've put the delay after the utility because then when the utility goes back down, it won't cut off the delays. The delays will keep repeating afterwards. So let's have a listen to this effect. I think I want the rate of the redux to go down a little bit and that'll just make this sound a little bit more crushed as the gain goes up. So if I go over to my shaper device, uh, I want this to be around about, let's say 70 to 55 in my range. So I'm gonna go over here, go type in 70 to 55 and because we're doing it we've flipped it the other way it's going to be going down instead of up the the shaper is going to be backwards so let's have a look on oh, no, i'll explain so it'll be going down instead of up as it is here so it was pretty subtle there but you can see the rate did go down i think i want to make that a little bit more pronounced and make it go down a bit further well, let's do something with the snares. It'll be a bit more obvious. I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm just going to duplicate the track this time instead of making a chain though. And let's put it onto 16th notes and just draw a whole bunch of snares in. And the snares are going to sound like this. Let's pull down the sustain a bit. And I'm just going to grab my utility from over here, copy it and paste it onto this snares track and modulate the same thing. So grab, a, go over here, the maximum value to 50% and map it to this utility gain. Then we can add a whole bunch of processing to this as well. So maybe you wanna add a vocoder or a beat repeat or go into the MIDI clip and change the chance that they'll actually play. So let's say for these ones over here, which is where that, which the, which is the ones that are gonna be triggered, Let's say we can bring down, down the chance that they're actually going to play. So sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, and it will give different sort of grooves each time. Maybe let's put a frequency shifter on there. I really like modulating frequency shifters. I think they're cool. Uh, we don't even have to map it. We could just turn the LFO amount up, and now it's going to be just sort of moving the frequency of the snare around. That's pretty crazy. I think I want to uh, modulate the frequency shifter just a little bit to go down at ever so slightly. So I want it to be starting at 50 and then I want it to be moving down just a tad. So let's go into my shaper. I think I want it to be moving down to maybe 40. Let's try that. And then maximum value is at 50. Actually, it needs to be the other way around. So it needs to be the minimum value is 50 and then it'd be moving to the maximum value of 40 and map this to this frequency shifter and just have a listen. Again, maybe let's put some delay on there. I think I'm just gonna delete this last node here, holding shift and then make a new one up here and so that this doesn't really make these clicks that I've been experiencing. That's a bit better. So this has a cool sort of effect. Maybe let's turn the... Maybe we can make the frequency shifter a little bit more pronounced as well. So maybe this go down further. I think that sounds pretty cool. Let's have a listen in the context. So maybe we could delete the hats here and just have the snares going here and then maybe 
uh, have them both running here. And you can do so many things with this. I'm just scratching the surface, but maybe I want to make another track and uh, grab this open hat here and paste it in this track and make some MIDI clips. I'm just going to copy the MIDI clips from this one so it sounds like this. So this is just an open hi-hat that's kind of repeating itself. And I'm just going to do the same thing with the utility device here and map that to the shaper at 0 to 50 maximum. So it's a bit like a riser effect in this case because the hats are repeating so quickly. So maybe I could bring that here. And there's just so many different things that we can do here. So if you found some of these techniques inspiring, I really urge you to experiment with them. So to round this idea off, all we need is a baseline, right? And so let's have a listen to the project and try and listen for the shaper movement and how everything is kind of cohesive and working together rather than doing its own thing and trying to to fight to get everything to be working like one track rather than multiple different tracks. So let's have a listen. Awesome, that's it for me. I hope this has sparked some inspiration for you. There is so much limitless creative potential with what we can do with these Shaper devices. They're free and easy to use, so why not just experiment with them, right? If you've enjoyed the video today, remember to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. EDM Prod is not just a YouTube channel, so if you like our videos, you might just like our other stuff. Go check out the EDM Prod website if you want to. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.